everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm filming on Tuesday today um, because I'm going on an outing tomorrow. Um, in this uh, video I, I'm going to review this book here called Super Clean Super Foods. Uh, power up your plate, boost your health, 90 nutritious foods, 250, way, 250 easy ways to enjoy by Fiona Hunter and Caroline Bretherton. It says, power up your plate with 90 nutrient-packed superfoods. Understand why each superfood is so good. For, understand why each superfood is so good for you, and how to introduce it easily into your everyday eating plans. I got this book um, at uh, oh yeah, it's Home Sense. Um, I got this book at Home Sense um, on one of the weeks when I when I went there and I walked there for Home Sense near where I live, um, and I couldn't resist this book because it's full of. It's really graphic and like like that. It's really graphic. Um, lots of uh, pictures and I hope you can see that. Um, yeah. So I just had to get it. So I'm just going to, in this video, um, so yeah, I got really excited over the colourful pictures and all the feedbacks. Some of which I already knew. Others I needed reinforcing and others still I had not learnt about before. Um, the book was an easy, simple read for me, a welcome break for more intellectually stimulating books. So in this video, I'm, I'm now going to talk to you about the food information in this book that I found most interesting. On page 26, the book discusses wheat germ. Now wheat germ is something that um, I've never actually, I've never bought wheat germ before, but now I really want to go out and buy it. Um, it's particularly special because it contains all the fuel that a plant needs to grow. Wheat germ is the part of a plant that grows into wheat grass, in other words, into a brand new plant. Now you can find wheat germ in many health food stores, and as I said, I'm thinking about getting some. It is recommended that you add a tablespoon to a smoothie or cereal for added fibre, so it'd be quite nice, I think, to add a bit of wheat germ, say, to winter porridge, um, or overnight oats, add to a smoothie. I really am up for trying that. I really hope to try that at some point. Have any of you ever tried wheat jam before? Let me know. It contains the mineral manganese, which is vital for energy production. On page 30, barley is discussed. It is important to use pot barley in order to get all the benefits, as this is the least processed type of barley. Barley contains more fibre than any other whole grain. And it contains very high levels of the anti-cancer mineral, selenium. Selenium is a mineral that many of us don't get enough of in our diets. Another main source of selenium, by the way, is Brazil nuts. Now, in fact, if you consume just two or three Brazil nuts a day, that would contain all the selenium, all your day's requirements of selenium. So if you find it hard to get enough selenium in your diet, one easy way of getting it is in Brazil nuts. But not to eat too many Brazil nuts because too many would be bad for you and selenium is one of those minerals that you need on a regular basis but also too much selenium is also toxic um, but obviously you'd have to have a lot of selenium for it to before it gets toxic so just a handful of Brazil nuts a day would be would be a good way of getting enough selenium in your diet without overdoing it but yeah most of us don't get enough a very tasty sounding salad recipe is described which includes cooked pot barley halved cherries goat's cheese walnuts almonds green leaves and a citrus dressing. Sounds really very nice. If you can't consume grains containing gluten, thankfully I don't have any problems um, with gluten, but I know quite, it is quite common for people to have problems with gluten and not be able to eat um, gluten containing foods. Um, there are grains that don't get naturally are free of it. Quinoa being one, um, quinoa is a good alternative. Quinoa is a complete protein. It also contains three times more iron than brown rice. On page 35, a recipe is given for a quinoa vegetable soup. Cook chopped onion, carrot, celery and garlic until soft. Then add a tin of chopped tomato and cooked quinoa. And uh, um, if, you, if you're short of time, you don't have time to cook quinoa. I mean, it doesn't take that long to cook, but you can get ready-cooked, um, pre-cooked, I should say, uh, sachets of quinoa that could be used for this. And then simmer that for 15 minutes. Blitz the soup in a blender with chopped parsley. That sounds very nice. So moving on to nuts now. On page 44, pistachios are discussed. Pistachios are really good for eye health because... Sorry. Pistachios are really good for eye health because they contain the antioxidants, lutein and zeaxanthin. Lutein 
gives them their bright green colour. Also, pistachios contain more potassium than other nuts. One 28 gram serving contains as much potassium as half a large banana. On page 47, cashew nuts are discussed. Now, cashew nuts. Cashew nuts are a good source of copper, important for healthy bones and teeth. On page 51, walnuts are mentioned as being an excellent source of omega-3. They help keep our skin young because the fatty acids strengthen the membranes of the skin cells, helping to lack in moisture. Their copper content, meanwhile, supports the immune system by helping the body manufacture white blood cells. A recipe is given for winter Waldorf salad on page 51. Toasted walnut halves are mixed with celery, apples, red cabbage, radish and sultanas, to which yoghurt is then added. On page 52, eating for good sleep is discussed. Add wheat germ to porridge to increase B vitamins, as a deficiency of B vitamins can cause sleep problems. All whole grains are a good source of B vitamins. Yoghurt contains calcium, which boosts levels of the sleep hormone melatonin. Nuts such as almonds contain relaxing magnesium. Walnuts contain tryptophan to make for relaxing neurotransmitter serotonin and melatonin. For meal, it is a good idea to have a small amount of protein and plenty of carbohydrates to produce the serotonin needed to make you sleepy and eat at least three hours before bed to prevent indigestion stopping you from sleeping. Yeah, I've noticed a very strong correlation with this. I've noticed that by not by not eating too late, so ideally finishing eating by no later than 6.30, but the earlier the better, um, at least finishing the main part of the meal by then, and certainly not eating anything after, like, say, 7.30, ideally earlier than that, um, so the earlier the better, I found definitely it's had a very strong correlation in terms of the quality of my sleep. And also, I found that when I have a glass of milk in the evening, that also aids sleep. I've definitely noticed that if I'm drinking a glass of milk and a banana, I um, sleep onset is a lot quicker. And I've been doing this now. I've noticed this really strong correlation since I've started doing this for like about a month. Um, so it's something I intend to keep up. But yeah, certainly I've noticed that what I eat does have a very strong influence on my quality of sleep. I've also noticed that eating spicy foods for me is not a good thing um, in the evening. So if I'm going to have anything spicy, I'll try to have it around lunchtime. Um, but every person is different and you'll find you'll notice different um, foods that aid or hinder sleep because it's a very individual thing. But you, it's certainly a good idea if you do have problems sleeping to keep a, a diary of some description of what you eat because it can be quite, you know, and, and notice any like patterns. Um, so yeah, so eating about th at least three hours before bed to prevent indigestion stopping for sleeping. Well, I'm going to continue this review next week so there's quite a few other foods in here I'd like to cover. Um, and as I say, this is a very good book, and, um, which I do recommend if you're interested in healthy eating. Um, I'm now going to move on to video number two, where I'm going to guide you through the recipe for peach raspberry cake I tried recently. So moving on to video number two now.